That's it. Uh, uh, Senator Poirier. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you for being here. Um, actually, I, I want to get into, um, I guess my question is going to be to Mr. Watt at the end of the day, but I'm going to be including uh, Mrs. Wright in my, my comments, though. Um, I had the opportunity in the last year or so to meet with high school um, students in, in my province of New Brunswick, and obviously the, the question became the cannabis and the, the law of it coming in. And in that discussion, what I realized um, was a lot of the students felt the risk of normalization, or they were seeing that, you know, if, if it's going to be legal, then it's okay, there's nothing wrong with it. And I also saw, Madame Wright, in your remarks that you actually pretty well spelled out exactly what I had witnessed personally uh, at the school when I was there. Of the, they're saying that they feel the students that, no, 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 there's no big deal in driving and there's no big deal in taking it. It's going to be legal. Uh, it, it's completely safe. So at the end of the day, I guess, being involved with the uh, Canadian uh, School Board Association, Mr. Watt, my question is, in your experience in working with these youth, uh, do you see that the normalization of the consumption, uh, consuming cannabis by our youth as an unintended uh, consequence of this legislation? And the second part of my question is, I also realize that Madame Wright talked about all that they're offering uh, in the school system and being there for helping with the families and the addiction. But in rural New Brunswick, where I'm living, and in even the more rural, uh, remote rural areas of Canada, I'm kind of wondering is where are they going to get this service of addiction and family service in a timely t um, you know, fashion as they do in the cities and in urban Canada? Uh, and if you have any concerns with that. I'll go first. Uh, it is a grave concern for school boards that the use and consumption of cannabis do become normalized over time. As mentioned in our remarks, uh, in 2002, when the Senate did its study, the Special Committee on Illegal Drugs, the statement was made that at no time should the decriminalization of cannabis lead to such a social normalization in terms of the use of the substance. And I think that that was an important recommendation. Um, one of the major recommendations coming out of the study that the Senate realized at that time, which was 16 years ago, it was not that long ago, was that the Government of Canada should adopt an integrated policy on the risks and harmful effects of psychoactive substances covering the whole range of substances, including cannabis, medications, alcohol, tobacco, and other illegal drugs, with a focus on educating users, detecting and preventing at-risk use, and treating excessive use and I was a page in the Senate when that report was released and so I was there when the testimony was given. It was very clear that these recommendations were being posited with reference to youth in particular. So it is a concern for the Canadian school boards in terms of a, a social acceptance of cannabis use as a result of decriminalization. And the second part of the question about um, the accessibility to addiction and family services, um, does that have any concerns? Like, in, in, We know it's quietly available in, in urban Canada, but when you get to rural Canada and even very remote rural Canada, uh, the longer you wait for the service, the less service is available there. It's not in, in a daily. Do you have concerns with that, that the appropriate uh, time frame to give the service that the families uh, that need it will have it? Uh, uh, either Madame Wright or Mrs. Uh, Watt, okay, well, if you want to uh, comment. Let Mrs. Wright go first. Okay, Mrs. Wright. All right, Wright. thank you. Um, and I'll actually turn this over to um, my colleague, Andrew Mendes, as well. Um, I, I, I think that you also heard me say that even though we have this lovely resource here in an urban centre, it is still not adequate or sufficient mm -hmm. to be able to effectively deal with substance use in of of several kinds in the youth population and the young adult population. So even though we may have more than you would in a remote rural area in New Brunswick, it is still not sufficient. And that's why our recommendation is, is enhanced resources, not only for treatment, and that's really important, but also early intervention, primary prevention, and that goes across and rurally, it's really important. I think the other point that um, my colleague Catherine made is the important role of involving youth in how to 
engage them in early intervention, primary prevention, or education. Because what we may think is really a great way of doing it um, may not be adopted at all uh, by youth. And we also have to look at what it is that's effective. And there are some very good research that comes out of the uh, Center for um, uh, Children and Youth Mental Health here in Ontario. It's all around engagement, um, and they have youth involved everywhere. And so I think we can learn from each other collaboratively about how to do this really critically important piece. Whoa, I'm sorry, we're past. <laughs>